Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Ted Davies Artistry. I am Ted Davies. I'm your host. I'm an artist. I'm a podcaster. I'm a lot of things, but we won't get into that. Um, I wanted to do this video today for quite a while, and it is going to, frankly, piss a lot of people off. Um, and I hope it's in a good way because growing pains are part of how we grow. And I think that this is going to be as, as truthful and honest a video as I've ever made. And I am so glad that I've got uh, the person I'm talking to today, uh, Aaron Dowen. Um, Aaron's a creator, but he's a storyteller. And I've always respected what he's done uh, as a as a creative, but also as uh, a business person. I think that we handle, we pivot our lives. Um, and sometimes when we pivot, it's it's in the comfort factor. And, and I think that that's what this title of this video is all about. Going live is lame, uh, especially with the streaming services that we have. And I know, I know we're going to have people comment and Ted, you're, you know, POS, you're, you're, you're whatever, you know, you've gotten accolades now and you're okay. Yeah, I get it. But I want you to listen. I want you to really see what we're trying to say. I want you to broaden your horizons. And that's why I wanted Aaron on because he's done a few things. He's gone through you know, frankly, a lot of hell the last couple of years. And I went through this uh, 25 years ago. And it's something to where I want to give people hope because that's what we're, that's what Ted Davies Artistry is about. I want to give you hope as a business owner. And you know what? I want to give you a little tough love here too, because the bottom line is, is that I said, going live is lame. And when we're, when we're looking at that in the big scheme of things, it's not going to grow your business the way it did during COVID. I said it. I made the statement. I'll allow all the comments to come in. Of course, we're not live, but you'll still have to just type them in. What's going on, my man? What's up, man? How's it going? It is going very well. I, you know, I, I wanted, I actually, I handpicked you because you're about as honest you're going to be. You're not, you don't, you know, fluff it up. You don't, you're it. So that's, and that was one thing when we were talking periodically, you know, it's not like we're hanging out every day or whatever, but you know, you're, you're the, the best storyteller, I think that I've come across in the last, probably, I'd say probably, I, well, since the, the, uh, the amazing Kickstarter you had with the file folder, <laughs> that, oh, yeah. um, and tell people about that real quick before we get going just tell them i mean the kickstarter that it was yeah was, i can't think of the name of it right this second but yeah that was um it was one last job and it's one um, last job Thank uh, you. spy thriller it's a black and white spy thriller in the in the stylings of like um a 007 feel with a little bit of take in there um right. and, and it, was. We're gonna, it was yeah it was it was it was a fun creation um we're looking at wrapping that up hopefully in the next year i think mm -hmm. um but it, it's been a fun ride um I actually, I think we're just going to jump right into doing a, finishing it out as a graphic novel rather than doing another single issue. Um, but I guess that'd be a whole other discussion. For sure. <laughs> so, sure. tell, well, well, maybe we should tell everybody who you are because I, I should have started out. But anyway, that was a killer uh, Kickstarter. <laughs> anyway, but, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. My name. Uh, so again, I'm Aaron Dowen, and I run Catalyst Comic Studio. Um, and we put out a bunch of different stuff. We started out with uh, superhero stuff. Um, but we also do some other things like dark fantasy and horror, as well as, um, the one last job, which is spy thriller. We just did our best Kickstarter to date, which was fall of night, which is, um, about a night Templar who goes a wall and ends up in feudal Japan. And, um, that one's, that one's really special to me. So I'm looking forward to getting that one out into people's hands. Um, and then I'm also a writer on top of that. So I do a bit of prose. And I write things like a devotional and um, I have a book on like biblical worship and a lot of articles. And, um, you know, I, I edit or some things for people <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, it's pretty much who I am. I'm also a musician, singer, songwriter, all yep. that stuff. You're, you're creative to the T. So, I mean that to have you on though, and the, and the perspective you've got um, now that we both are, we're, are divorced parent mm -hmm. we were i mean i'm remarried obviously but um and my kids are much older than yours i think that uh the the thing about you and i'm not a i'm a spiritual person i'm not a religious person okay and i think faith is super super important in in your life you've got to have hope 
You've got to. Yep. Um, it Absolutely. doesn't, I don't, I don't care what your, what your beliefs are, but you got to have hope. And that's one thing that I've tried to do with this channel over the course of the last four years. Yeah. You give people hope. You did a devotional book um, for the single father, essentially. And I think yeah. that's huge, dude. If I would have, again, I'm not, I'm not in that Christian base, but that was awesome that you did that. Can yeah. you tell me a little bit about why you did that? What was, I know personally why I would want it, but tell people a little bit about that, how it can help, help uh, their trials and tribulations too. Yeah. So for me, um, <clears throat> you know, you, you mentioned um, being spiritual and that's always been a core part of who I am. I grew up as a pastor's kid, um, mm -hmm. had my, my phases of rebellion, but my rebellion was, I guess, different. It was more so like, well, why are you doing it this way? Um, my story is a little bit different than a lot of people's because I never deconstructed. I never lost my faith. I adjusted it. Um, and I started searching out what things were um, historically accurate, historically wrong, biblically accurate, biblically wrong. And there's a lot of wrong. Sure. Um, but that helped solidify where I stand now on a lot of stuff. And, um, you know, I married someone who I met in church. We went to what's essentially like sister churches. They're part of the same group of um, churches. But um, you don't get married in that kind of a life and expect to get divorced. But inevitably, that is what occurred. Um, and then it immediately launched into you know, what happens next. Uh, both of us had undergone changes in uh, personality. I had reverted a lot back to who I was before um, but before I was like trying to be somebody in church. Sure. Um, and because when I was with her, you know, I was, um, a worship leader and people knew me, like I was on platform. I played at large shows and none of this is to boast. It's actually to, to, no. to say the opposite of it. Um, and so when I reverted back to like just being a creative and just doing things like even the crazy stuff I write, it's, it's, it's a it's an outlet for me and I look at it spiritually as well. Even if mm -hmm. I'm running dark fantasy or horror, that's getting that's flushing darkness, like stuff like that. I'm putting it on paper. But um, so we went through we're going through that and then the custody battle ensued and I was clawing for resources outside of basic devotionals and outside of just basic readings and realized that for dads going through divorce and custody battles, there just isn't anything resource wise. You might get in a group on Facebook and, and be able to yeah. hear um, a bunch of people complaining and, and and rightfully should. I mean, I vented plenty during this period and I still do now. Um, yeah. But, you know, I, I wanted a resource that could help. And so when I realized there wasn't that resource, I started working on it myself. Yeah. And um, basically, originally what I had called it was um, when the lights go out and it was mm -hmm. going to be 30 days of gratitude. Um you know, going through the struggle. And so I rephrased a little bit to make it shorter and it's called restless. And that's honestly just because of the sleepless nights sure. and it just clicked for me where I was like, that should be the name. And then it's 30 days of devotions, but it's also a workbook. So every day starts off with the scripture. Um, and it's, it's more so to set the tone of what the devotion's about. So one okay. of them will, will say it, it'll be something about um, worry not about what, what food you're going to intake or, or, or something like that. It's from Proverbs. Um, mm -hmm. And so that chapter is about your self-image. And I, I think it's called Dad Bod. Um, but it's about your self-image. <laughs> and then mm -hmm. uh, it, it's just kind of my thoughts on, on that. And, and uh, every one of them ends with a little bit of a, a moment of uh, thought or prayer. And then if you flip the page, it'll have a little workbook, which is like, you know, how are you wrestling with your self image? What things do you wish you could change? And then, you know, the next one would be like, what are some thoughts you have on how you can adjust your mindset? And so all of them are to build you up toward this um, mentality of like realizing that while you're going through this stuff, you still have a responsibility as a father, you still have a responsibility as a functioning member of society. And, um, you know, I, it's been really helpful for me and I was lucky enough to um, have, well, I guess lucky is a weird word, but I had some friends going through the same thing at the same time and where we were also all part of this comic book world. And so every day I would write one and I would send it to them and just hearing their feedback of like how much it helped them was um, pivotal for me on, on creating this. And then um, I think I say it in the intro. I saved the last two days. I knew what passages I wanted to use and I knew what the vibe I wanted to have would be. 
but I saved the last two days for after the custody, um, the court trial and um, not knowing how that was going to pan out. And um, I think it reflects well because it shows uh, kind of the full circle of, you know, spending 30 days going through these different things. And then I topically organize them as well. So if there's, so you can reread it. If you're mm -hmm. just having a day where you're struggling with anger, um, then there's a section in the back that'll show you which days are talking about anger um, or worth, you know, feeling worthless and stuff like that. So really the things that guys feel anyway, gets so much more amplified when you apply that kind of pressure. And so I created it topically so that it could help people in, in a bunch of different ways. Okay. So, the thing I like about it is, is that you got out of yourself. Mm -hmm. So for me, I was extremely, I felt victimized right. and I still, I still do. I fight with that yeah. because no, I, think I get that. that. It's, you know, it's, it's Damascus. It, you, you become this, you, you, well, you're talking about in church, you've got this persona and you're trying to be a great dad. And, you know, I'm involved with, I was involved with my kids and everything, mm -hmm. but it never, it always fell short. Because of the yeah. way the court system is based on, you know, yes, always fell short, even though I was there, I did, you know, and it was, well, an it, it was an economic and it was, it yeah. was so frustrating, you know, because I was involved, it, know, especially it, depending on your personality. Like yeah. for me, I knew I had to keep my personality in check um, because, you know, you, I mean, we're on a podcast right now. We could say everything we needed to say, everything yes. we wanted to say about yes. our exes, but yes. I didn't do that. I and didn't do it either in front of my kids, especially no way, yeah, right. no way, no way. Um, and, and at some point that is going to, you know, it'll fix itself later in life. Um, for me, my daughter's seven and then, um, you know, preach into the choir, bro. Yeah. One, my, one of the my busy son and my daughter are so close with me now. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like, yeah. Yeah. And, and luckily for me, like my daughter, um, she understands there's a part of me that's happy in the sense that it happened when she was so young that it's just kind of what she yeah. knows now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it, that's been a blessing because it's not like super jarring. And um, the the woman that I am with now, um, she also she has a daughter that's five. And it's the same kind of situation. We had all gone through that same same thing at mm -hmm. the same time. Mm -hmm. um, and so her daughter was well, so young that it's that good they to see really her. Know. It's good to see her perspective too. Because yes, there it, is. There's a there's again yes. listening is such a huge thing for both sides to see. Yep. Yeah, and the I, and the, it, the part I'm that's sorry. the hardest to get over though is mm -hmm. the unfairness. Yes, um, of how everything plays out and. Yeah. Um, I think I don't remember if I put it in the devotional. I know I talked about it on a, a TikTok when I was promoting the book. Mm -hmm. um, I, one of the questions I had posed to people was, you know, is there a moment during all of that that haunts you? Because for me, there is. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's a moment where um, and, and one of the things I made sure I didn't do in this book is put my ex on blast or like right. you know, talk about it. I don't it think it should. I don't No, think it wasn't the point of it. It's no. just to be encouraging. No. Um, and, and even what I'm about to say, it's not about her explicitly. It's actually about my lawyer. But uh, the thing that haunts me still wakes me up at night is um, the moment when it came to the court trial, when I saw my lawyer flip open the binder that had a just a huge stack of pages of messages and stuff where I'd asked for time um, and was told no for various reasons. And I remember explicitly him putting his hand on it like he was about to present it. Mm -hmm. And then he closed it and never presented it in the entire court case. And it's because yeah. he thought that the judge wanted to hear something in particular. And, and so that still to this day, like I think about it constantly, I still see it replayed in my mind. Um, I don't know how much it would have helped in the end because, um, well, I mean, if you go through this stuff, you know how yeah. it kind of goes for, for dads, but yeah. um, I do think about that quite a bit. Yeah. And that's, you know, that that's been hard because anger, I've gotten to the point now where it's like, it's not, and we're going to get to our subject. I, we're, I know we're <laughs> off, off a little bit, um, but anger is, uh, it's, it can fester and it, right. and it's something to where if you can spin it into, into helping others with their dilemma, yes. that is, that's the one channel that I could do. I could, I could, I almost got lost in it and it becomes an addiction and that's not mm -hmm. good either because you're not solving your trauma, if you want to call it that. Yeah. Um, and you know, I look at it too now that I'm glad that you, 
I'm glad that you put this book out because it does, it's going to help single dads. And, and, and there's going to be a segue of what we're doing and why we're talking about this because growth, um, building outside yourself, thinking outside the bod, the dad mm-hmm. bod or whatever mm-hmm. in business too, thinking outside yeah, the box. For this sure. is, this is why we're, what we're talking about today about being about the live versus not live, which this isn't live obviously, because I wanted, it's too distracting. You know, there's mm-hmm. too many things going on. You at least were able to be focused on helping others through your transition, if you want to call it that. And I, it, that's so valuable, dude. That's that's truly what I consider uh, Christ-like, if you want to call it that. Like I said, I'm not yeah. preachy. I'm not at all. I don't, whatever your denomination, whatever. I'm not a Christian-based um, religious person at all. So, uh, but I think that that is probably uh, most Christ consciousness that you can possibly have is helping another yeah. to get through it. And you're not bashing anybody. No, very no, important. not at all. Very important. Very important. Yeah. Um, so agree. kudos, kudos. Um, and we'll find out. I want to make sure everybody's got your links too on this at the end. Make sure we'll put everything in the description and that. I, did you want to continue? I didn't want to cut you off. Was there no, else? you're that that's pretty much it. I mean, it's, it's on Amazon. So, <laughs> okay. Well, and I think it's, like I said, it, it helps the masses, uh, mm-hmm. of, um, of single dads and that's and you know what we're at fault too i'm i was at fault there's yes. nothing there i'm not a perfect dad and i right. and i'm the first to say that i wasn't the perfect husband like and that i wasn't was, either and i that's wasn't part either, of what's so. in there as well it's like uh, the admission i think is important for all of us is we're not we're not all clean handed in any we're of not, this we're not and i and i i think that's extremely important to yes. to show vulnerability and, and to show your flaw your mm-hmm. flaws plural yeah. um but I know where I'm at now and I know that Christine and I've been married almost, uh, well, we've been together 25 years. So I yeah. mean, it's, you know, and looking back on it and looking at the growth and seeing where everything went. Okay. I get it now. Mm-hmm. I get it. I understand why I went through it. Right. And I, and I understand that. And it's, it's reassuring. And this is why I think, and I, I firmly believe that I know this is getting kind of into our God, God thing, but <laughs> I firmly believe God's got a good sense of humor. And, yes. I, and I think yeah. that there's, there's, it's not funny at first, but now you look back on it and then I can talk to guys like you and I can, I'm like, Hey, I get it. And I understand. And I, and I'm, I applaud you for, for stepping outside the box and, and producing something that is there now to help. Yeah. It's a resource. And it, it's, and you know, huge. it's, it's been so huge. different to, to talk about it too, because, yeah. um, you know, like it's, it's everything cathartic. that was talked it's, about. Yeah. Well, I mean, but also like the audience is, it's, yeah. uh, it was a yeah. little bit nerve wracking to sure. talk about it. And, sure. um, you know, to, to talk about it, especially on lives and stuff where I was with a bunch of comic book people, because there's a lot of comic book people that are also, um, spiritual or Christian even, um, and they don't really talk about it or whatever. And then you, you say something about this and all of a sudden, like you get get messages. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you get messages. That's like, man, I really need something like that. And I'm like, well, you know, that's why it's there. And it's been interesting because, um, it, it did make me nervous to talk about it. It really did. And, um, and then I realized like, um, I I have said this for years and it's been my mantra since I was, you know, probably a teenager, which is, I was created to be creative. And, um, and this was a format of that. It's not super creative in the sense of like, I'm coming up with stories. It's creative in the sense of like, I'm compiling something to try and help people. Yes. In a, in a very desperate situation. Right. Um, and neither one of us are attorneys, neither one of us are, it's not that type of book. It's just a guideline to help get you through that day. But I'll tell you right now, you if know. you're about to or starting to enter that, I, I have two pieces of advice and then we can move on to the other thing. Yep. And they're the two most important things. And I will honestly say that they're two that I failed at and um, shot me in both feet. Um, number one, don't leave the house. I agree. 100%. Number, number two, get an attorney, get your own attorney. Yes. Agree. hundred percent. Even just to talk to hundred um, percent. Yeah. That's a good segue. Um, <laughs> You're, yeah, and I think uh, so to all the single dads and all to the the mothers that are in a situation that they're not, it's not working out. You know, God bless you, and I hope that you guys can. Uh, I mean, check out the book. Check out what you know. Check out yeah. Amazon. We'll put the links in it. Um, so today, what I really wanted, we really wanted to talk about was, and this is like I said, this is where the, the rub. This is the rub. Um, what I've seen in the course of the last four years, five years, let's say, going on five years. Uh, we went through hell. I mean, COVID was unbelievable. Yeah. Um, and this streaming service, StreamYard, was probably, I think, the saving grace for a lot of us. I, 
I don't think I would have been able to cope with a lot of it. And mm -hmm. growing a station, uh, growing this YouTube channel, thank you, thank you, thank you for everybody that's believed in me enough to to completely uh, go through this and, and be part of this. We have an opportunity um, that going live was essential uh, right. for what, what we had. Going live was, uh, it was our only lifeline for a lot of people. And I'm, what I'm seeing now and what I've seen for the last year, uh, I quit going live for about a year ago. Uh, and I know when I went to Substack and I'm doing a lot of things mm -hmm. there, which I think was probably the best move creatively I could have done for, for my fans, a lot of them, because they're, it just means, it means more. There's more, uh, it's, it's tactile. It's, it's closer mm -hmm. to the, uh, to Ted Davies artistry, I think as a, as a brand, but also as me. And, um, what I'm seeing and what I have seen, and I think that's one of, one of the reasons why you and I talked about this off camera was we're seeing the same show times 10 over and over and over and over again. Same 30 people, same Kickstarter mm -hmm. uh, boasting, which is fine. I get that. I, I know they got people I have to promote. Um, and this is not to bash anybody. I'm just throwing this out as a discussion. And yeah, it's not live, but you can still comment on it. Right. Um, you and I are in the same viewpoint. I don't, I don't think that live has the impact that it did year, years ago. And yeah. I think during COVID, it absolutely had its format. Yes. I think it has its place, but as a whole, it's exhausting. It is absolutely, for me, exhausting to watch. I don't even watch them, half of them. It's the same people over and over yep. again talking about the same stories yep. with no end. And there's yeah. nothing fresh. And I'm like, you guys have to get out. I, you know, that's one thing I've done. I've I've gone out and found producers, major producers. I've, I've interviewed them. I've, I've uh, CBS executives. I've done things that, that are trying to broaden, you know, and I don't get, I'm not getting paid by these people. I get mm -hmm. paid from sponsorships and stuff, but I don't get paid by them. And it's, it's so vital that you guys have to get out of your comfort zones. I'm yep. not saying you got to call. And some people are doing it. Uh, Ryan Permissons doing it. He's got some great interviews, great mm -hmm. people that have been on his show, completely off the reservation from comics, which is great. I love that because we need that. Yeah. Um, artists, things you've got to get to the point where you are growing exponentially through other outlets because it's a like I said, it's exhausting. You guys are dying on the vine. And mm -hmm. I, I know that's hard to hear. Rub. Uh, that's, that's, you know, some people call it corporate Ted, whatever. That's the rub. I think that that is a very much, uh, it's a, it's an epidemic in, for your business. If you do not broaden out, even if you're, even if you're interviewing somebody in town, that's nothing to do. Maybe they got a bookstore or something, something, you know, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. I, um, you know, I started, podcasting um i think beards and comics premiered it, it premiered in february of 2020 yeah because i remember we recorded one session and then COVID hit right. and we were like oh crap so um you know and i was, and I was a big fan i was a big fan from the <laughs> I was. yeah you know you I mean, know it, i was on it and i yeah i mean yeah yeah it, it was fun i mean it it was fun because we wanted to do a show anyway about like you know, life as a indie comic book creator sure. or sure. just like telling people like our failures and stuff. And that was the whole plot. Mm -hmm. um, and so you, we would we started having guests on or whatever. And um, as soon as COVID hit, it was like, well, I guess we're remote anyway. We might start having guests on. So right. we did. Um, and then, you know, we dropped that weekly for I ended it. I think we ended we I mean, we got to 100 episodes and ended it. Um, and it's because the whole last <sighs> I don't know, 40 episodes, yeah. maybe more. I don't know. We were just like, Ugh, I'm so tired of talking to creators about their campaigns. <laughs> right. And I mean, don't, and, and it's that's human nature, though. And it's not yeah. a bad thing. It's just that's yeah. the reality of it. Right. Well, it, it was so. more so because like it felt like we couldn't. It, it felt like we weren't talking about creativity, which is what we cared about. We were talking about what's marketing. cool about their campaign and yeah. marketing. Yeah. yeah. Um, which, it, but not even like a marketing discussion. It's just like their campaign. Right. Um, you know, I, yeah, it's a platform because we had those. Yeah. yeah. We had those times where it was like, well, let's talk about just marketing as a whole. I enjoy that. I enjoy any discussion about creativity, 
um, science stuff, tech stuff, marketing, all that. Yeah. But well, it's it got building, to be it's such building, a drag. I, yeah, it's starting, yeah. To starting to build up entrepreneurship. And that's the key. Yeah. And I, I'm guilty of it too. I was on a lot of people's shows Same. and I, you know, and I, and I, and I thank God for them. I really yeah. I mean that, but I'm just saying now, as we're looking at it, I, I, I agree with you. Anything and and I still that. will do live streams. And I've told people that like, if I'm invited to be a guest, then I'll do it. Um, but as far as hosting, uh, basically what ended up happening was uh, the, we were struggling with uh, Beards and Comics format anyway um, because of what I just mentioned with the campaigning. Um, and then we also had the live stream element. And then when Matt uh, when Matt went full time into doing tattooing and had to part, part ways with the comic book world, uh, you know, that was kind of the end of the Beards and Comics sure. main era. And so from there, I started the the former version of this, which was the inner inner sanctum podcast um and just had random guests on and talked about stuff and then i started uh that's pitching with um which is hilarious what a great yeah title. I well I, I really enjoyed that too with uh with my lady and with tear from yeah. sovereign comics yeah. um we had a blast and we did two episodes two episodes and then the third one happened it was a complete fluke. We wanted to do a random live stream to try to help somebody who had a live campaign. And I was like, you know, what would be fun is if we did voiceovers. And mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. so we just randomly did a live stream and just started going through all our friends' campaigns. We had so much fun with it. We didn't realize we were live streaming for like three hours. And yeah. then afterwards, the three of us were like, we could we can make that a show. And so we did two episodes um, live. And then when we did the third one, nobody... It, well, part of its streamyard is was mm -hmm. having problems, still is having problems, yeah. um, and so there were just zero zero interaction. And so after a while, we're just like, "All right, time to end it." So like the end of that episode is just me saying, "All right, well that's about it." <laughs> so and then we just cut it off. And after that point, um, Jessica she was like, "I don't I don't really want to waste time doing this stuff anymore." And I was like, "You know, I'm in the same boat. I think it's." It's too much. And she had been messaging me during that show um, saying, like, nobody's watching. Do we end this? But I'm so wrapped up in trying to produce right. and run the pages and stuff that I didn't even see her messages. And so then I just felt bad about it. Um, and and I was like, you're right. Like, this is taking too much out of me. And um, and I'm not getting the enjoyment out of it that right. I had when we first did it. So um, it, there's a possibility that that's pitch and may come back, but as a podcast, um, you know, I released that article and talked about this stuff Correct. where I'm just kind of done with it, with doing the lives. Um, it got too watered down, uh, back when we started beards and comics, um, you were around, Sierra Nova was around and then all of a sudden everybody was like, let's do lives and let's yeah. do shows. And it's, and it, and it was good. I don't mean that at all, but now yeah. you yeah. got to really look at it for why, the other thing, and I'll do respect to what you just said, three hours is a hell of a long time. And if yes. You don't, and if yes. you don't break that up into part one, part two, part three, I'm not yeah. going to listen to it either. Yeah. I mean, yeah, for I'm sure. A, I've been, I'll, I'll be drawing and stuff like that, working on the drawing board and I'll listen to Rich Roll or somebody mm -hmm. that has, you know, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Calypso likes him too, apparently. <laughs> Sorry to hear. Um, but yeah, Rich Roll is one of them. But as I'm, that's one thing, because he's got a purse, <laughs> the mail's being delivered. I apologize. Um, How dare that mail, man. Right. And that's, and this is part of editing too. During live, I'm going to keep this in the video, but <laughs> during live, it's, it's a complete, it's crazy. Cause you got, you got people jumping yep. in and yep. you got the bots coming in, you got all these things happening and people are still they're they're frozen. Then you got to come back in and all, all hell is yep. breaking loose. Right. So it's very hard. Uh, and I did like, I, I want to say almost, gosh, I did a thousand hours or something like that. A live mm -hmm. shows which that's a lot and it's, it's very lot. stressful and it's extremely stressful. And I got to the point where I just, I'm like, I told Chris, I'm like, I can't, I just can't do this. It's too yeah, much. I mean, I, because we, I, did, we did drinking with the Davies. We did all, and that right, was fun. That right. stuff was fun, but I don't drink anymore. So that's gone. I don't smoke no. cigars anymore. That's gone. Ah, so, crap. You know, <laughs> right, right. And that's, but for healthier living. Yeah. Um, but the live side of that was that type of environment was fun because Christine mm -hmm. was enjoying it. Like you were saying, your significant other now she enjoy. If it's not fun though, it got to the point where it was a burden, and it was like, well, you know, you uh, know, and yeah. and then you get to the point where it's like, her and I could be hanging out. We could be playing games. We could yeah. like all that time, or we could be working on stuff that we yeah. actually care about. You know, yeah. um, I had realized as well. I got a bad mentality about um, this is the part that's going to get me in trouble. 
Um, That's all right. Go when, for it. When I brought so beards and comics had ended, we took a long hiatus mm -hmm. and then I brought inner sanctum live and the entire purpose of it. I said in the first episode was I wanted my friends to have a chance to um, talk about their campaigns with me and, and my audience. And, um, and so those were on the catalyst pages. Um, and I did that because I felt some weird sense of responsibility. Um, like I hadn't been doing enough because before that yeah. is when, um, the separation and divorce happened and I just kind of had pulled away from comic book. I mean, I was still writing constantly, but like had pulled away from the scene. Sure. Hadn't sure. really, a lot of people were like, I thought you kind of disappeared. Um, well, and what were you supposed to do? Your life well, is falling apart. I mean, yeah, what are you supposed I, I, to do? I actually even released comics during that time. And yeah. people were like, oh, I didn't even realize that. But yeah. anyway, um, I had this strange feeling of responsibility of like letting people connect. And then, um, and I guess it's because I was so disconnected. And then I did that for a while. And I realized like, I thought that this would help them. I thought that it would help me mm -hmm. and it's not helping them. And, um, very few of them are supportive on the other side as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so that luckily brought me to the point where I was like, okay, well, I could probably stop doing this now. Mm -hmm. Um, and so now, you know, I do the, uh, I, you know, I'm only four weeks in or something on just my inner, inner sanctum, which is right. just on my sub stack. Right. Um, but that's going to be one that's just a recap of my articles. And then um, last week's I had Chad Perkins on to talk about constructive criticism. Right. Right. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to do little segments where it's like 10 that's minutes, brilliant. 15 minutes that's of brilliant. just chatting. Yeah. And people can listen to it on a break or on their lunch time hour. Exactly. Their job. Yeah. That's the way to do it. Absolutely. I did not realize that. Um, Absolutely. I didn't realize that my Substack community cared. Yes. I guess. It's, they're until, awesome, man. I love yeah, them. Yeah. Until love I them. came back. Because I had the Substack for years. Yeah. It's just been there. Yeah. Um, I used it a lot before. It's In fact, I did like a 12-week um, ongoing short yeah. story called Parallelium. Yeah. Um, and then after that, I just kind of stopped posting. But once I came back, I was like, wow, these numbers for people actually right. reading the articles and stuff right. are crazy. I know. And, and then I... It, I and you got the, emails, you've got the, you've right. got the content, I mean, interaction. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then I dropped one, uh, flash fiction article. Um, and I was like, okay, well I can keep doing these cause it's really just my writing warmups. Yeah. Yeah. And then I dropped one episode of the podcast and I looked at the numbers. I was like, that's more people than we're listening right. to beards and comics. Thank you. I, so hundred percent agree. And I'm getting, I'm getting the more I'm getting, and I do a lot of audio uh, mm -hmm. throughout, you know, but the, with Substack, I, for whatever reason, I'm reaching the right people. YouTube, right, the, right. The, the algorithm's different. Yeah. And it doesn't, I do like this show because we're interviewing. I want to put it on YouTube. I mm -hmm. want to offer it. I'm going to also put it on Substack because you're on there too. But yep. I have paid subscriptions for my podcast. Mm -hmm. sub, you know, it's only paid. This is a little different because we're interviewing. I try to do it that way. So you got you yeah. get your traction too, right? But yeah. um, Substack's such a gift. It's such a, it is, it is. And, I, and I'm the, the people that are involved with it is just, I'm just so happy yeah. that we're, we're a community. Ted's tribe is huge on that. It's huge. so much. And I can't get over the difference between like having a, none of this to be boastful, but we have a Facebook page, right? That has like right. two, 2.5 thousand right. people following right. Right. zero right. interaction. <laughs> right. Zero. <laughs> right. Right. That, like that is so a while, but crazy. Yeah, it is. It's like, cause on Substack, people are there cause they want to be there. Right. And they're reading. That's yeah. Brilliant, yeah. You know? and, and they're listening, and, you know, that's so that, that's part of that forward thinking of like, well, okay. I mean, if it's working, I'm going to start using it more. Right. It also has kept me to, that's I've gotten really good uh, lately about, um, keeping a schedule. And, yeah. um, I mentioned it in my first episode actually, where I started using this app called Habitica and, yeah. um, yeah. it takes your task list and turns it into an RPG. You have right. a character, you right. can, you can get <laughs> mounts, so you can cool. go on quests. It's we so started cool. a party with me and a couple other dudes. And mm -hmm. like now we all do quests together, which are really just us accomplishing our day to day tasks and taking down bosses or whatever. Um, yeah. so that once everyone was like, Oh, this is kind of fun. We all got obsessed with it. And now we're like, I'm putting every task that I do during the day in there just because it helps us defeat bosses and stuff. Um, but the, what what I was really trying to get at was it really, really helped me get to um, specific dailies. Um, like I have a habit Understood. tracker 
which has been good. Mm-hmm. But my dailies, I have three, and it's prayer time, Bible reading, and warm up prompts. And today is day forty one straight uh, that wow. I've not missed any of those three core ones. Right. And, I love um, the I love the prompts. They're whole. Some of them are cool. I, I have I, a I, lot I, of fun. Yeah. I, I realized. Um, People, I guess because AI is such a thing now, people thought that when I said that this was based off a prompt, that right, I was I, generating I the text. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got a lot and, of hate on that. And it's like, dude, that's not what he meant. At yeah, it's not, no, it is it is a prompt that I am writing based off of. But right. I cleared that up. So hopefully people get that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's been fantastic to come back to Substack and actually yeah. see um, the results it, of like it people was the looking best, at it. It was the best move I made. And when I made the announcement, um, everything spiked, everything yeah, spiked yeah. in Substack, which I'm glad because that, like I said, I've got some just such true fans and I, I love them dearly. Yeah. I know that if, you know, they're just, they are so loyal um, and patient big right. time. and they're just so, and I, and I really, they're just amazing. Um, and with Substack though, there's such an option to do. It's a great platform. It's so cool. You can do so right. many and it's monetized. You can make money straight away. And that was like huge. I spent how many, how many years have we spent on YouTube? And yeah, we're, we're so we're long. getting, we have to do, yeah. And we have to get paid certain ways and all this stuff, jumping through hoops here, Substack, boom, right away. You know, and yeah. it's like, man. yeah. So I haven't even, I haven't even remonetized mine yet. I had it monetized at the beginning yeah. and then I need, stopped yeah. when I wasn't you using it. You need to do that. You need to do that Yeah, straight up. So, cause I want you, I want you to get wealthy <laughs> on what you're doing. Um, But the live aspect of it, um, with the way that we're doing our businesses now, I just don't, unless it's a Kickstarter launch or something of that sort or something that's just so spectacular, uh, you know, I mean, yeah. doing a live drawing. Okay. I get it. That's, that's cool. And I, I, but even then, even then I I get to the point where it's uh, when I do it, sometimes the last time I did it, I had two people watch it. I'm like, what are you talking about? You know what right, I mean? And it's right. like, I just, I don't understand it. I don't understand it, it, how people. And it's so like based off of, um, other people, you know, like th- their day just happens to have to fall around the time you're doing a live. Yes, yes. Um, and, and I realized also like, I'm not watching anybody's lives. No. <laughs> no. And I think it's great that people want to do it. And I'm glad that they're building their business that way. They, mm-hmm. That's what they want to do. Just think outside the box a bit. Yeah. See if there's another angle that you can possibly, you know, I don't know. I don't know what else to say about it. Or just do them if they're fun. Like for, for us, one of the things that I found that was fun and that I will continue to do as a live stream is, um, uh, team, team chats, uh, which is basically like we, when we had fallen height rolling, we, during the campaign, we had just the team just hanging out and talking about the campaign, letting people ask questions. Um, we did that for Chad for set the hook as well. Um, because Catalyst is, we accept submissions and stuff now, and that was mm-hmm. the first one we picked up. And so we had him really and really the, yeah, just trying to grow. <laughs> we um we had him and his artist on, and you know we hung out while his artist was just drawing, mm-hmm. and um so we all dazed out a lot because I love watching people draw. If you're going to be on a live stream and we're have to host it, we might as well get to watch something fun. Um, but I will I will still have those nights where it's team nights. Um. And those will be spotty because it'll just be whenever we need to do one um, because I can't say they're also helpful. Um, <laughs> there's a couple of people that I think the most helpful ones that I've been on and, you know, I've been on a whole lot of shows and it's part of what it got annoying was I'm just saying the same things over and over and over and over. Yeah, yeah. And then if it's a large guest group, then it's like I'm saying a couple of things within an hour and a half and that's it. Um, but uh, one of the ones that I went on, he stays live until um, everybody gets like two backers. And oh, um, okay. and I enjoy that because that's it's kind of funny because it's like a goal. It's um, an incentive. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And that's yeah, see, that's brilliant. That's I'm learning something there. OK, so yeah. maybe lame, maybe live isn't lame in that perspective. I get that. It, it just depends that. on how you use so, it. But but you also have to consider the dedication to time that that would take. Sure. Um, because you sure. don't know that every campaign no. that you're going to have on there. And cause there were like six of us on the one that I was on and, um, mine hit, mine got two backers within the like first few minutes. And so I was like, well, do I, can I be done now? And I, yeah, yeah, I, st- <laughs> like, I stayed for a while, you know, I stayed yeah, for a while. Yeah, and then eventually he was like, you know, if, if you want to go, that's fine. I'm just okay. going to be live. And I was yeah. like, all right, I'm out. Yeah. So, yeah, um, I that's one know. way to use it. I, I see the, 
I mean, I, I guess I can see both sides of it all. And I want to do that. I want to, this is a, an option for you guys to, to make comment about it because they tell me if I'm wrong, tell me, because I don't, I don't want to be so arrogant that I, I close off listening. Yeah. For me, for me, this is the way I want to run my business. And this is yeah. the way Ted Davies artistry is. And if it's not for you, that's fine. But I consider it a waste of time for, for a lot of, yes. Of what it, of what it could be for a lot of people. We can, those you could hours. utilize your time. Yes. You could utilize your time and I know it's fun and I know it's a clubhouse and I get it. And that's cool too. Um, but let me know. I mean, let, let write to us, let us know. I want to know what you think. I want to know what really people want. Ugly, you know, I want to know what people want to consume. Um, yeah. and not just other creators. Cause I yeah. feel like other creators are so quick to say lives are cool because you're with other people. Yeah. And, and I think that's because we're all introverts and that's why we're creatives. And so that is our outlet. Um, but I, I, everything I, I think about so much more of lately is like, but what does the actual consumer want? And what do they actually care about? What? Because they're who I want to talk to. I love other creators, but I can talk to all y'all on Facebook. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, it's consumers that, and I think that's a whole flaw within this realm as well, as we're yeah. focusing on the wrong audience. We're focusing well, on each other rather than the consumer. They're a loyal audience. I, I, I give them mm -hmm. that and I, I yes. appreciate that. I don't mean that. And, and, I'm, and I feel you were talking about accountability in that. I feel if I don't put out a video that's worthy, I feel responsible then. Yes. Like, yeah. I'm just being detrimental to the community, to Ted's right. tribe. I can't do that anymore. So people yeah. like you, the one, and I won't put out anything if it's not, if it's not uh, legit, if it's not yeah. a concern or a, like I said, like a producer from LA or whatever, to get people out of their box, to get, yeah. to, uh, you know, it's just, um, and I'm doing I that. And I, I meant the, I mean it with the utmost compassion and empathy, because I know it's not easy and I know you're scared. A lot of us are scared and it, it's, it's, I understand it. I just want to make sure that you're not, doing it it's just it's like hitting play and then just hearing the same music over and over and that's okay broaden your horizons a bit you know, yes that's all and well and, you know yeah. i encourage a lot of people as well um I've, I've realized um all right let me think how to phrase this in a way that's not like <laughs> you're because I, I don't intend don't, i just don't can... intend for it to come off like a jerk but no. i encourage um a lot of comic book script writers to try writing some kind of flash fiction or prose, even just flash fiction, because it's like a thousand words or less. Yeah. Um, because I think it helps a lot with storytelling. I don't think I would be an effective storyteller if I couldn't also write prose or, yeah. or do like full outlines. Yeah. Um, I don't like going on shows with comic book writers and hearing them say, I write comic books because I can't write. Like, that is so, as a comic book writer, first off, I find that insulting. Yeah. But second of all, you probably shouldn't be trying to tell stories anyway. Um, if, that's your, it, if that's your, yeah. If that's, that's your outlook, it's like, yeah. I write comics, comic books because I, I'm not a writer. Um, See, that's, I, I think it's the best. I, I've said this since day one. You can read my idea in 20 minutes and you can mm -hmm. get the concept. And you, yep. a child that has a hard time reading, uh, my son did growing up. He wouldn't pick up a book. There's no way he'd pick up a, a, a anything like anything right. behind me. No way, no way. But a comic book, he could get it and he could yeah. be involved in it. And I wanted that for the public. I want that's a service that we are so important. Comic books are so important. They are to the world. They really are. Whatever the story is, if yes. you call it woke, whatever, I don't care. It no, yeah, I mean it's it's, it's so important. That's the whole flavor of indie comics is there is yes. something for everybody. It's but so vital. what I want to see vital. is that we start treating it like it's valuable and not like it's yeah. a throwaway. Like I did this, this yeah. and because I'm not good at other stuff. Like no, like first off, have some have some pride in your work. But second yeah. of all, like if you really don't think you're very good at it, that's what editors are for. That's what friends are for. Get a yeah. beta test group. Yeah. I mean. I, this is it, that's part of why I write flash fiction and put them on my sub stack is like, sure. I just want to know that people enjoy the writing right. side of what I do. And sometimes, um, sometimes those flash, those stories, those small little stories explode into huge, uni huge universes. They, they go, you can go forever on some of these prompts. I mean, and that's, that's the reality of it. There's some things that just keep, keep looking at it from a standpoint of you are worthy. You are valuable. 
and you are making the world better with every word you're putting down on the page. I mean, every drawing that you do, but think, you know, yeah. like I said, think that it's, it's, it's going to end up building a, it's going to be better for everybody if you are creating and putting it out. Right. So I appreciate you, man. Of course. Um, I appreciate it. We're about that, that time. So uh, where can everybody reach you, bro? Yeah. Sub, so Substack. <laughs> Substack. yeah, uh, Aaron down dot substack dot com for just writing stuff. Uh, Catalyst comic studio dot com for um, comic book related stuff and Aaron Dowen dot com for just like books and just, I guess, you know, pretty much writing portfolio. Yep. And that's uh, we'll have it in the description too. make sure I get that. We got to do a few things when we get off air here. <laughs> Check yeah. out everything that I'm doing too. Uh, the QR code is uh, a gift to you. Go ahead and check it out. That'll take you right to my sub stack and you'll get all the, all the about Ted's tribe and seeing everything that we're doing. I'd love for you to be part of it. I hope this has been again, worthy of you guys and your time. Cause I think Aaron is a, is a gift to the community. I think that he's a talent. Um, I've, I consider him a friend. We've been friends for gosh, four years now and it's because of COVID. So I appreciate you, man, big time. And I think that there's a, uh, there's room to grow for all of us. And I want to hear the comments, good, bad, ugly, whatever. I want to hear them. Um, tell me I'm wrong. Tell me why I would love <laughs> exactly. to hear it because I want to hear it. I want to learn. And, um, you know, you guys are awesome. Uh, that's why we're here. So thank you guys for being part of Ted's tribe. Thank you, Aaron, for being part of Ted tri Ted's tribe as well. And uh, no envy, no fear. And we will talk to you soon. Thanks again. Thank you.